This video covers writing exponential functions. It's our learning track of two. Write an exponential function in standard form that fits a scenario. We're going to be working mostly with tables, but also with prompts as we try to write these new kind of functions. As I do this first example, I do suggest that you put down your pencil and watch it through because I'm going to be doing a lot of erasing and rewriting as I work through this first problem. Okay, so we're given this table and we want to write a function for this table. Some of you might be a little more familiar with f of x if you would like this part of our table to be f of x, that's okay too. So. Let's try to create a function for this table. In past lessons, what we would have done is we would have drawn a difference column, which we call delta, and we would try to subtract. What plus 100 equals 50? Well, that'd be negative 50. What plus 50 equals 25? Negative 25. What plus 25? equals 12.5, would well, that be negative 12.5? And you see, so on and so on, that my difference is not common. So then with quadratics, when we were writing quadratics from tables, we drew a second difference column, and we tried to come up with a delta this time. So the difference between these two is is 25, the difference between these two is 12.5, and the difference between these two is 6.25. So whether we're in our first or second, we're not common. I don't think if I continue with this anymore, I'm going to end up with any kind of common difference. Well, that's kind of the point. The point of this lesson is that there is no common difference because these aren't problems that are mainly controlled by adding or subtracting something. They are controlled by multiplication. So let's try to figure out what's happening here. First off, I start off with a 100. What do I have to do the 100 to get 50? Well, I'd have to, I have to cut it in half, which means I'd have to times it by one half. And that's how I get 50. From 50, how do I get to 25? Well, I cut that in one half, and I would get 25. From 25, how do I get the 12.5? Well, I times that by one half, and I end up with 12.5. Now, with the number changing every single time, this isn't going to help me write a function, but do notice right here the one halves, the one halves are the same every time. So this means that this will definitely be a number that is included when I write my function. So to get to 50, I have to use one half. To get to 25 from 50, I have to use one half. But what if I wanted to get to these numbers by using 100? Well, if I use a 100 with one half one time, I get my 50. To get to 25, I would have to use one half twice. See the two? And to get to 12.5, I would have to use the one half three times. So another way to write these things is 100 times one half to the first power, or 100 times one half to the second power, and 100 times one half to the third power. There we go. Now I can see that all of my x's, all of my inputs, are actually the exponents. And that the 100 is my starting value, and my 1 half is what we are doing to the 100 to get to each of those new inputs. So my function for this table would be starting at 100, I cut it in half a certain number of times. So here is my function. So for exponential functions, the general form is f of x is equal to a times r to the x power. So let's just recap a few things. First off, x is our input. We have it in all of our problems. If your function doesn't have an, a, an x in it, then it is not a function. f of x is our output. Sometimes it's also the y. Our a is our initial 
output and our R is what we will refer to as our rate. The thing that we're doing to the output every time, whether it's doubling it, cutting it in half, timesing it by three, dividing it by four, whatever that may be. Things to know about exponential functions. First off, the A will never be zero. The initial output will never, ever, ever be a zero. If it was, then there would be no outputs because zero times anything would be zero. If the R, if the rate, is larger than one, we call this growth. That means that the outputs in the table would be growing in size. If we have a rate, an R, that is less than one but bigger than zero, meaning that it is a fraction that is in between one and zero, we call this decay. Examples of this would be R such as one half, two thirds, four fifths, and so on. So now let's use this new form, knowing where to put our initial output and our rate, to, to write down exponential functions given tables and prompts. So the way I'm going to approach this is very similar to the way that we create difference columns. The difference is for problems that are linear or quadratic. Since these are exponential, instead of a difference column, we're going to call this a rate column. The way that I come up with my rate is I take the outputs and I divide them going back up. So 27 divided by 18 is equal to 3 halves. 18 divided by 12 is also equal to 3 halves. So that is going to be my rate. It has to be the same all the way down the rate column. Also, check and make sure that your rate is matching your outputs. I see that my outputs are growing. That means I need an R bigger than 1. 3 over 2, or 3 halves, is a number bigger than 1. So this does make sense. If ever you end up in a scenario where these don't go together in a way that makes sense, go back, check your division or multiplication to make sure that they do line up. You might have actually just been dividing the wrong thing on top or bottom. So now it's time to identify our initial output. Our initial output happens where the input is 0. This number is 12. So f of x is equal to a times r to the x power. In this problem, the very first output, which is a, is 12. It gets multiplied by 3 halves every time, and that's to the x power. Please put your fractions in parentheses whenever you have them. Here is my final answer. This function would generate any output for any input I want to use it for. Let's try this one more time. Here's my table. I'm going to create another column call it a rate column, black out the last spot. 4 divided by 12 is equal to 1 third. 1 third. 12 divided by 36 is equal to 1 third also. So my R in this problem is definitely 1 third. Where is the initial output? The initial output is not on this table. On this table, it starts at an input of 1 and an output of 36. I need an input of 0 and whatever that output. If I'm thinking about going backwards up this table, I'm noticing that every time I go backwards, I have to times it by 3. So 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 3 is 36. So, what, so my A is going to be whatever 36 is times 3. So that is 108. So now it's time to write my function. In this problem, we have t of x, so let's write it with that. t of x is equal to 108 times 1 third to the x power. Here's a prompt. The size of a bacteria colony, b of t, doubles every hour. At the start of the experiment, b of 0, it's equal to 2,000. 2,000 bacteria at the beginning of the experiment. Write a formula that could be used to model the size of the colony where t is the number of hours 
after the start of the experiment. So we definitely were given input 0, output 2,000. So this is important. So my A would be equal to 2,000. Now where is the R in this problem? It says that it doubles every hour. So that means that my R would be equal to 2. And instead of X, the problem says to use a T. So in my standard form, my general form, we're going to use a T instead of an X. So B of T would be equal to the A, 2,000, times the rate, 2, to the T power. Make sure that you're following the rules of the variables, such as using T or B, as the problem says. That covers it for writing exponential functions. If you have questions, make sure you write them down to your notes and ask me when you get into class. If you have questions right away, feel free to send me a message and I'll get to you as soon as I can. Don't forget to click forward, hit submit after you answer the questions.